Hello, everyone. Uh, it's Juan Balmori here. I'm going to give you an update for Outlook add-ins and the Outlook REST V2 decommission. Uh, what's going to be the plan here? So what's going to happen for all Outlook developers here in the community call or watching on demand? Basically, uh, as you probably already heard, uh, on November 30th this year, the Outlook REST V2 endpoint will be decommissioned. So basically, I am adding just a sample snippet here uh, on the on this slide so that you can identify that if you are using the get callback token API with the is rest parameter equals true, uh, that means that you know uh, this call. Event, I mean, I'm going to tell you what how how the the commission is going to be be about, but this at some point is going to stop working. No, so this impacts both uh, Exchange Online mostly, uh, uh, but you are in Exchange on prem. Uh, on a hybrid configuration only, uh, you know, 100% on-prem, the rest is not available, but on-prem and hybrid, you, you know, you'll have also this problem. So the scenarios impacted is obviously if you, if you want to use the REST APIs as part of your Outlook add-in, uh, this is not, no longer going to be available. Uh, there, there, I have specific areas of the API that will get impacted, but the bottom line is the REST APIs uh, are not going to work anymore. And then the delegate scenarios also have an, an, a couple of APIs that are using REST calls to to do operations on behalf of the owner of the folder. That's also, we'll, we'll have an alternative for that. So basically that's the problem that we have right now. So let's go a little bit more into detail about the impact because I mean, when I when I when we were announcing this uh, the, the commission, you know, one big concern that I that I have and I shared with the the team who is owning this product is that we really don't want to break our add-ins, right? It's like uh, we should never do that. So, so the good news here for everybody that is using this today is that we are going to be granting exceptions uh, for this decommission for all add-ins who are using the REST endpoint before the. Uh, before that, the commission date before November. So basically, if you have an add-in today that is using the REST endpoint, you will still be able to be using the REST endpoint until the end of support of Office 2019, uh, which happens to be October 14th, 2025. So basically, you have a few more years, you know, to 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 move your add-in to alternatives, which is in this case the graph. No, uh, um, I think that's a natural progression of 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 things here. No, the problem is that add-ins created after the decommission date. So we have a, a way today of 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 knowing what add-ins are using, you know, the REST endpoints. So we'll have this list of add-ins by ID. But if your if 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 your add-in is created after the decommission date, then uh, you will not be able to use the REST service. No, so you need to move to either uh, the, depending on 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 what your operations you're doing uh, to the graph or to AWS instead. So this is all good news for everybody who is using the, the, the API today. Does the extension for add-ins apply only to? No, this is for all add-ins. All add-ins that are using the REST endpoints are uh, not necessarily just coming from the store. Uh, are also add-ins that are uh, privately released are going to grant this exception as well. So good question, Michael. So now the other thing that I want to comment here is, oh, well, this is more detail about exactly what's impacted. No, So we have this all these APIs, and I'm going to go one by one telling you what's the story here. So basically, obviously, when, when you, when you the, get call, the get callback token async method with the is rest option is impacted, of course. What's going to happen here, this is basically the API you use to get the rest compatible token. Obviously, if you use the property is REST, you get a REST compatible token. Otherwise, you get an EWS compatible token. So this API is going to fail for new add-in. For new add-ins, it's going to fail. So basically, the recommendation here is to use the graph as an alternative. No, so we recently shipped the SSO feature, and it's in fact I think uh, David here himself produced a few examples on how to use the, you know, the single sign-on and get a graph compatible token. So that uh, you know your, your add-ins use the graph instead. Now I got the I, I I don't own the REST endpoints, but what I what I've learned from from that team is that we have now 100% compatibility 
between the REST endpoint and the graph endpoint. So, so that means that everything that you can do with the REST endpoint today is also doable with the graph. Uh, of course, uh, I mean, I don't know, uh, maybe maybe there are a few exceptions here. Uh, at this point, one of the call to actions that I have for, for our community is to, to just let me know if that's not the case so, so that we can prioritize filling up those gaps. And of course, uh, if you're using EWS, so EWS is, um, at this moment is, is that we, have, we don't have any concrete plans to, to deprecate. So, so it can be also an alternative to the graph, no? Uh, in case, so the recommendation here is try to use the graph first, use the single sign-on methods to, to get those graph compatible tokens and use the graph, you know? And the documentation here is uh, very extensive, by the way. So uh, REST version, obviously this, this API is going to become basically obsolete. We will not be able to know the, the REST version anymore. Uh, we're going to keep the conversion IDs. So we have a few APIs to convert to REST ID and convert to EWS ID, as we think that that these APIs can might be still useful for the graph in case you need to supply an ID. And finally, the shared properties, target, get, REST URL, which basically means the it's API that you use to get the URL to make the REST column behalf of the owner of a folder. So we, here, we also need to have a, a, a graph alternative. If you're using this for, for, this is very relevant for the delegate scenario. All right, so is there a way to check if a certain ID is in your extension list? Atso is asking. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Atso, please follow up with me offline. And, and I, I was getting a list of all these add-ins uh, this week, in fact, uh, so that if you if you can actually send me an email, we can see verify that your add-in is in this list. Um, I will send you my contact in a second. All right. So uh, also in addition to this, there manifest change and enterprise install. Michael, this is extension for adding supply to deploy in the store. Yes. It's only on store deployed add-ins. No, uh, again, this is not only for store deployed add-ins, enterprise deployed add-ins uh, will also work. In addition to this, is there any is this a manifest change? No. There are no manifest changes. So there are no manifest changes here. Uh, basically, uh, the way that this is going to, I mean, we, we still are 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 thinking how, how we're going to do it, if we're going to fail the calls immediately, or if we are going to allow them and verify that this is this was not an add-in uh, before November, and, and then, you know, contact the developers and, and make, make sure that they make the move, no? But there are no manifest change associated with this. This is going to be it's all fixed server side. That's my, my hope at this point. All right, so let's move on. So the bottom line here, so my, my recommendation for everybody, is to move to the graph as soon as you can. This is something that you know that Microsoft is moving strategically. That our customers are asking. You know, I, I know many big and small and huge ISVs who who actually their customers are asking them to stop using REST, to start using EWS, and go to a more controlled scope level, you know, uh, permission settings. So. Uh, this is uh, about about providing more granular security of operations. So this is the right move. So please make sure to move to the graph. For that, obviously, you need to be checking if if we have the uh, the requirement set identity 1.3. So the, the easiest way to implement a call to the graph is to use SSO. Fortunately, that was shipped uh, I think just a couple of years ago with the identity 1.3 API. So if if the if during the context of activation of your add-in, the identity 1.3 is available, it means that SSO is available, single sign-on is available in that environment. So basically, you can do the handshake, the SSO handshakes, and get a graph compatible token and make the graph calls. Now, remember that the graph calls, the part that was created for SSO is that the admin needs to deploy the admin within the organization and, and the consent happens at deployment time. So the admin is the one who is in advance accepting, you know, the consents of the graph scopes that your admin requires. So the flow that that which is most of the flow of office admins, the flow that requires your admin to be to be deployed from an admin perspective, is fully. I mean, the, the user is gonna don't gonna get any dialogues or anything like that. You know, it's gonna be pre-consented by the admin. On the other hand, if the user goes directly, because you will have to to pop you know the the consent messages to the user so they can use it. 
EWS, I mean, if, if the requirement set 1.3 is not uh, available, sorry, uh, basically the fallback is to use EWS. You know, remember that EWS, is, uh, in, in the context of Outlook cadence, doesn't mean that you can call anything, right? It's limited to the, the calls that are in this link that I'm showing you here. It's, it's I mean, most cadence are okay using what what the, the functionalities that are listed in this link, and, and you should be okay. Call to action for everybody. Uh, do let us know if if you find gaps in the graph endpoint. So I think I the team feel confident that uh, that that that's the case. But 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 you know uh, I want to hear from you guys. If you if you find anything that is not working as you expect, absolutely let me know and we we can work with the rest team. You know. And that's what I have for today. I think uh, there are a few questions here on the chat that I'm going to answer. Uh, is there any chance to know well, this? Graham will follow up with that question offline. Uh, I was referring to if the update of the app manifest and redeploy. Does that reset the REST compatibility if done? Yes. Like <laughs> if you change the ID by which your adding is, is making the call, you're going to fall into the new adding category. So you need to be careful with that. Eric Legold. Eric, how are you? Uh, get on the graph. Yes. I'm not sure why people are laughing about this comment, but I would just put like. Will the detection of pre-existing IDs be tied to a manifest ID? No, it's not tied to a manifest ID. So we know uh, there, there is a token that is passed uh, on the call that, that we identify that it's coming from an add-in, and from there we can identify which, which add-in specifically is, is making the call. So it's not a manifest change. It's not the idea of the manifest. Could we have a demo of a basic outlook adding using the graph in the future? I think this already exists, Pinakin. David, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we do have a pattern, uh, patterns and practice that is talking us exactly about this, you know, how to do an SSO authentication and then make a graph call. We'll make sure that you guys have all these documents. So, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. I, I put a link to that sample. Uh, it, yeah. it kind of floated up higher in the chat. But there was a link to it if you want to look at it. Yeah, that example is basically what you need to do. Uh, but of course, uh, this is just the first interaction that we have for the community. The first time we're talking about this with you guys. Uh, expect, you know, we're going to be blogging about this. We're going to be providing more documentation, you know, so that you're ready. I think we, we are right on time. You don't need to worry again if you're adding this been just today. So that will that exception will be granted. All right, so I think there are no more restricted questions here. Uh, but again, move to the graph, guys. That's my my advice here. And thank you very much, David. All right, thank you, Juan. This is uh, really great news, I think. Hopefully, I'd answer a lot of people's questions that they've had, because I know uh, folks have been asking about this for a few months. So uh, very cool. Mm -hmm.